Yes, a big welcome back to Oz and Zed Combined Racing Leagues for our 2023 1995 Indy 500 on Automobilista 2. I'll be your host, Neil Haynes, and I uh, hope you enjoy this race replay we did on, the race was on Sunday, just gone on the 21st of May, and you can see the schedule that we had. We had qualifying before the event on the Saturday, and we, that was basically a one-shot sh qualifying for one run, uh, one driver out for four hot laps, and the best time will give them the qualifying uh, position. So, and then we went on to the race on the Sunday. So a full 200 laps, and uh, it was very entertaining. So we'll go to the track map, and you can just see that we have a rich history here at ANZ CRL running the Indy 500 over on the Xbox with the Project Cars 2 since 2018. And we've had seven sided die, took out the inaugural uh, 500. And then it was Shad's in a dominant year in 2019, uh, taking victory there. And I believe also in 2020, he became our inaugural ANZ CRL Triple Crown by winning this race and the Le Mans. 24 hour including Bathurst 1000 over on Xbox Project Cars 2 but it was 2020 Dark Racing 40 took his first victory uh, he'd been aiming to try and get victory over the last three years so finally took it on his third attempt in the Andretti Autosports Honda the logical sports in the uh, Schmidt Peterson Motorsport Honda in 21 took a very um, happy victory there. Saturday 15 was our winner last year in the RLL Racing Honda. But back in 2021 was the lap record from the Logical Sports. And he's on his way to victory there with a 38.979. So we'll just move on to obviously the standards. This is a standalone special event it was. But also it was the final round of our 1995 Kart IndyCar series, uh, so it was actually round round five, and you can see Christopher Razor uh, had the lead of the championship on 73 points, and Scar Triple Six, after a miserable Laguna Seca, surrendered uh, his uh, lead there, and really looking to see if he can get a good result here at Indy 500, as he is four and a half points off the lead. So anything can happen, and it'll probably come down to whoever wins this race. Dado Racer in third position, a slight uh, margin to Joshua Hill, who came up the order after winning Laguna Seca race, and an equal tied with Woody, Woody Lizard on 52 points. Mr. Stompy in six on 34 and the list goes down there. So for this race, we obviously had some sub drivers to sub in for sub in for the drivers that could not make the final race as there was a reschedule for this race. It was meant to happen on the 28th of, I mean the 27th of May, sorry, but it had to come a week earlier um, just due to doubling up commitments. So we went on to the qualifying, and it was hotly contested, but it was Dado Racer who ended up taking pole position, only 0 0.019 seconds in front of championship leader Christopher Razor. So Dado was very happy to get the Mercedes-Benz Reynard. And just a note there, all Reynards, uh, as the Lola unfortunately is not competitive around these super speedways. So all the Lola drivers through the series were able to run the Reynard. 95 I sh um, chassis, uh, both at um, Fontana Motor Speedway that we had back in round two, and also this final round as well. The Trimington, he's come onto the scene uh, late in the series and put it on third position, and alongside him is Scar Triple Six, who is obviously vying for this championship uh, to try and see if he can get on top of Christopher Razor in this final round. Joshua Hill. Obviously, always super fast in position fifth. Ashley Cucci in sex, uh, six, sixth position in the number 27, Team Green. 
uh, livery. F VGA Philly, our first of our substitute drivers in the number 15 Walker Racing, as some may have seen um, that driven by Rangy Rover. So he is subbing for Rangy Rover. And Commander Cirrus in at the number four Chip Ganassi is doubling up with John Slow, obviously one of the Lola drivers that have to choose a Raynard chassis. And it was Commander Cirrus actually subbing for Timmy82, uh, who was driving that car. So he'll be in there. Jay Barrett uh, in the in the Chip Ganassi racing car. And uh, I was saying John Slow, sorry, he's not one of the Lola drivers. It's Christopher Rose. All the grayed out um, cars are actually the Lola drivers taking the Raynard chassis. So J John Slow. We haven't seen him since the Long Beach round, I think it was, was the last time we seen him, round one. Dark Lord in the number 33, Forsyth Racing. And then we had Woody Lizard in 12. G Dude in the number one, Marlboro Team Penske car. John Wade in the number 25, Arciero, and then the Unicorn, Highlander, the number two, Marlboro Team Penske car, and so he would be subbing, I uh, forget who he was actually subbing for, sorry, but, uh, and then Slide Science in his Reynard Honda. So let's get straight into the action, and we will pick up the start of the race with Dado Racer on pole position and here we go for the start of this race the first lap was a formation lap due to an earlier lobby uh, setting that was set wrong with the full course yellows in the game enabled and finally it did work after all these throughout the series we've been trying to make it work but here we go for the start of the race. So Dano had to go until the uh, start finish line. So we're off and running. Early position changes down here in the order. And the cars were very, very loose. We're gonna probably have problems trying to pick up these cars, unfortunately, like always. I uh, might just have to keep that uh, top banner up as uh, Commander Cirrus hold it on to that sixth position. It's uh, Christopher Razor. There's been a problem obviously with Dado Razor. Dado early in the race, which we uh, didn't get why the cameraman was having a break. So Dado Racer dropped down from pole position down into fifth position. He's just in front of Trimington, who's in the same colours as Dado, so we'll have to make sure we don't get confused. But you can just see how much the mid-pack here is trying to vie for position as it looks like Jay Barrett having a look down the inside. Almost touched Trimington, but Jay Barrett down the inside into turn three. Can he hold it? It's fighting back hard is Trimington, but it's made that pass made. Nice move. As we see it all filtering on through here. As down comes Commander Cirrus trying to have a look at Trimington and thoughts second. Why is just a tuck in behind. Only slap four of 200, a long way to go. And look how close VGA Philly is to the back of Cirrus. As it's a challenge here for position with, I think it was John Slow trying to have a look down the inside. As it's just a touch on the wall by John Wade, I think it was. And the unicorn's just down the back there as Tributon's still trying to hold off the challenge of Commander Cirrus. up front it's Christopher Razor as Scar looks like he's gone wide into the wall has he had a moment here no he's still high up on the wall there but oh he's coming in into the wall straight in the pit lane here so the first of the pit is Scar so he had a big moment coming in through turn three straight into pit lane for repairs
So single drivers could call ye yellow if they spun and into the barrier. So that was a side glint onto the wall. So he didn't call that yellow. And obviously if there's a multiple car incidents, there will be yellow as it looks like Commander Cirrus's car is just a little bit loose turning again into turn three. Now that's opened up for VJ8, VJ Philly. The VGA filly up into seventh position as Cirrus has got a little bit loose early on in the race. But up front here with Joshua Hill trying to f hold off a comeback drive from Dado. And you can see Christopher's all out on his own without any sort of draft partner. So you could imagine that these packs will catch as Dado makes that move for third position. So he's slowly climbing back through the field. Why J John Wade gathers it together. And John slow in the number four target racing. The Chip Ganassi team. In eleventh position. Looks like it's a little bit taily. And it's all flat out for these drivers. So let's go on board a roof here and uh, enjoy a lap around. We're aboard Jay Barrett in the number 12. Uh, target Chip Ganassi car. Following Joshua Hill just in front. See how much these cars are moving around. Now there was a lot of adjustment that the drivers made with their weight jacket to try and get that turn in. Summit's running in as high as five. So here he is having a look down the inside of Joshua Hill. He's down in there. So Joshua Hill's going to have to just let him go. But you can see how much higher that Joshua Hill ran up on the high line as he was getting caught out in that challenge, which is very hard. Turn three, you have to make sure that you let those cars through. If you try and challenge, it just throws you out. And look at VJ Philly with a run on Joshua Hill into turn one, side by side through turn one. On lap 10, how is this? And it continues on through to turn two with VJ Philly taking that position from Joshua Hill. Sensational move. And that's a very assertive move by VJ Philly as Highland is having a look down. So that is upset, obviously. Joshua Hill at this stage because he's just trying to regroup after the overtake from J Jay Barrett as in they come so maybe this was a core of a yellow flag I think it might have been there could be an incident yes there is there's a there's a, a, a wearing up on turn two so we've got Highlander and Commander Cirrus in pit lane. And also in comes Scar 666 as well. So these guys are taking the opportunity to come into the pits. And here comes obviously the car that had that damage. Getting his nose ring wing repaired. I don't know who it was actually who was there. That livery there was had me a little bit confused who it might be. Uh, Woody Lizard's in pit lane. see some of the other drivers come in thinking about it as they come on through or to get a quick free service during the safety car period but it's Christopher that stayed out That was two laps around for a virtual safety car. 
a full course yellow. So they'll have one more to go. So and all the cars that are a lap down will be able to get their lap back. So Scar should be able to come on through and get a lap back as long as the cars aren't already going through the final corner turn four. As Woody Lizard is coming out of pit lane. It looks like he's fallen a lap down. So I think he was obviously involved in the incident. And here we go. Race is started this time the ground. So there we go. So Christopher gets going with Ashley Cucci just behind him. Joshua Hill now right on the back of Dado, trying to upset the back of that car of Dado Races, tucked in right behind. And he's also having a look down into turn three. Oh, close, very close indeed, but Dado has hung around the outside. Will he continue this or will he duck on it? Because John Wade right behind him. He's obviously vying to see if he can make a move as well as John Way comes right down to take a position here with Joshua Hill into turn one. Solid move by John Way, but Josh Hill's having a look back down on the low side of turn two, getting the wheels just on that white line. And tucking in behind. A slide signs up in position seven. He was uh, lowly all the way down in 17th on 17th position. 16th position, I should say, on uh, qualifying. G Do didn't make the, the race in the end. It was a late withdrawal. That's VGA really having a look down the inside of slide signs. Looks like he's made that stick, so a nice move. So VGA, VGA Philly is on his move back up through the field. Took a safety car period as Scar obviously trying to... He's a lap down, but obviously wants to stay in the mix of things if he can. So he's just holding there. He's got the pace. Remember, he's second in the championship, so he needs to continue on. And hope for another, obviously, it will be more than just the one safety car. We've already had the one safety car period on lap 10. As it looks like Trimington's having a move on Commander Sirius, but got the step, the tail out, as is Scar. They're pushing so hard through turn one. And Dark Lord's still in pit lane after the massive incident that he had. And that's what the reports was. He had a big spin in front of Woody Lizard and came back onto the track from the low side up to the high side. Woody tried to go high, had nowhere to go, and collected Dark Lord and got severe damage to Dark Lord. So that's unfortunate. But up front, we've got Christopher Razor about to start lap two, lap uh, 18. Actually, he's on the back straight. So, and here comes Dark Lord. So Dark Lord's out of pit lane. And just rejoining now. So he's a number of laps down. But obviously the lucky return going back through the field. Getting laps back. There's a possibility that he can slowly make his way back up towards the front on the lead lap. Look at that though. He might be about five laps down. So that's going to be a hard ass. John Slow on his return here in ANZ CRL in ninth position. The Chip Ganassi car. But Highlander 
in the number two, Marlboro. He's up into sixth position as Slide Signs takes a move on. I think it's wasn't really Philly. I think our timings might be a bit out. Not too sure there. Might have been Dark Lord actually coming back on, so they were just getting a uh, lap in Dark Lord. Because they've got a little bit of a gap to VGA Philly. As he goes around the outside, trying to hold off John Slow. As John Slow's having a, a good run down the back straight here to have a little look down into turn three. Makes it stick, and uh, VGA Philly is happy just to let it go by. Just working into a groove. And that's what it's all about for these big events around Indy 500. Just get into that groove. Let those laps just tick on by as Trimington now. So is something wrong with VGA Philly? Yes, he's dropping through the pack though. So he's getting swamped. And he's got Scar Triple Six. He's trying to get a lap back, come back through the field. Right behind him. And uh, he's in the 21 Pagnan racing that you normally see is a red and yellow or red and blue type car, but all white that they ran for the Indy 500. This livery pack by A Fright. Has the different liveries for the Super Speedway as well. So very, very well done. But you just got to go through the pack and uh, actually up, uh, download it when you do run these circuits because the game doesn't automatically change the liveries. They'll just keep to the base road course liveries. As down the back there, it looks like Jay Barrett, I think it might be. Yes, so he's made the move now on VGA Philly after he was up in the, I think it was position five before that safety car period. He's dropping, so he may have a little bit of damage. He, something may have happened. He's tucking in behind Jay Barrett, but Jay Barrett just pulling away at this stage. Dark Lord's come back out of the pits now and he's holding some pace there as Trimington's just trying to get past him, which he does. He's got Scar Triple Six now coming through. So in the number 33, Forsyth Racing. Ford Cosas Reynard. In position 16. It's about five laps down. He'll be praying for some early, some more safety cars early on here. So Dado Racer. Now, the important, a little interesting thing as well with this race, so the, the engine damage creeped up about 10% over a stint. So if all the regular viewers may know that during the series we had accelerated tyre wear and fuel burn, depending on the type of circuit it was, but for the Indy 500 being a special event and the full distance of the race, it was all set to uh, a real realistic uh, tyre wear and fuel. So there was nothing to worry about extra tyre burn or, or, or fuel, but the engine damage crept up to about 10% on each stint. And as it got, you could probably do two stints, and as it got over to the 20%, you could see the performance, around 16 to 20%. Your engine performance, your top speed started to drop, and other cars that came out of the pits fresh with engine repair damage, uh, or their engine uh, repaired, would find that extra pace. So it was a little bit of a strategy 
Uh, so late in the race, you sort of see different cars on different times of where they've repaired their engine. And you didn't want to creep up to near 40% because that's where a lot of failure, failures can actually start to creep in and basically put a DNF to your race. So all the drivers were weary of that. And were just managing their engine damage and seeing how they can fight that and keep on their best performance throughout the race. Now this is a good period of the race where it was a good long session of green flag running. So we may just take a board of, and actually in the cockpit here, of Ashley Kutchi in that famous number uh, 2017 green that Jack Villeneuve won the race in 2000 and I mean in 1995. It's just unfortunate as we can see it would be absolutely brilliant if we could actually see the gears he was in, the uh, fuel numbers. The speed's about right and when you see the lap time that is actually how long the race has been going for at this stage. So 21 minutes as it doesn't get reset. So a few little things that would be make it a, a little bit better as far as publicising, I guess, um, Automobilista 2 out onto streaming services and uh, making it a little bit more user friendly and also viewer friendly to be get a bit more involved in the racing and uh, knowing what's going on. So, Riza, Riza, if you're watching, it'd be great if we can try and implement a few of these things in the game and vice versa when cars have the use of push to pass and DRS and all those different things would be good to know and also the ability to see how many pit stops cars have had it's one thing we don't see is the unicorn coming in to take a pit be nice if uh, the broadcast or even a replay you can actually sort of see how many pit stops they actually are up to because that would be actually interesting for the viewers as well. And an easy way to say how many laps down would be awesome as well. If we go to Dark Lord, we'll see that we can sort of work it out. Uh, on there, he's lap 24 of 200, but we know the leaders, as Christopher Rose are at the top on our displays, uh, they're on lap 30. So that's an easy way that we can obviously see that he's actually six laps down off the leaders. But let's go through the field and I'll have to bring up this so we can get onto the field. So we got Christopher Razor who's just put a lap on Commander Cirrus. And then we have Ashley Kuchi in second position who has just passed Commander Cirrus in the number five Walker Racing. And then obviously we have John Way doing a sensational job. Actually coming back from uh, neck surgery or back in the neck region surgery with some replacement discs and absolutely doing a stellar job in third position. Finding himself pull, pulling away and making that gap bigger to Dado Racer who has just come out of turn um, two onto the back straight. So Dado there in position four. And then we go down, we got Joshua Hill in fifth position as he goes and negotiates turns three and into turn four. Just behind him as he's come on is slide signs in the first of the Hondas in six. So from 16th, he's made up 10 spots in this race so he'd be happy with where he stands at the moment and lapping around very very solidly as well highlander in seventh and uh highland actually was in 16th as well was in 15th so he's another one so he's just been uh following slide but he's got john slow right behind him challenging for seventh position 
drift in white, almost tagged the outside barrier, the concrete barrier over there of turn three. He's lucky to get away with that as he's trying to have a look down. He's starting to have a run. And this is just it too. Some of the drivers that pitted in that last safety car period may have had engine change where the guys that stayed out are starting to see the effects of the engine wear and slowing their cars down just that little bit. Just behind this battle, we have Trimington in the number eight poor racing car. We got a double up obviously deliveries of that with Dado Racer. So still on the lead lap, as is this fan Jay Barrett in the number 12 target Chip Ganassi car, getting close to the barrier as he's drifted out wide on exit. VGA Philly in 11th position. Started in 7th, but we think that there's some sort of little issue with that car. He's dropped a ton of places. He was up in about 5th or 6th position. As Ashley comes into the pit lane, I think there may have been a call of a yellow as we can see them all start filtering in or is this just, actually there is no yellow, this is actually with them because they stayed out during the last yellow. So that's why they're in. So they have to come and get some fuel as they're running low. So they're doing green flag pit stops as some of the field, I think half the field took the opportunity to pit during the yellow. So Christopher now is got a healthy leap, but now he's come in. Now I think Dado Racer was one of the drivers that may have stayed out, was it? Or no, yeah, he did stay out. So he's coming in too. So they're all doing green flag uh, pit stops as Joshua Hill now will take the lead of the race. I believe he was one that actually did pit during this last safety car period. So he's been able to benefit from that and slide science as well up into second position and highlander in the Marlboro car in third position the three cars in the pits follow our leaders currently slide science doing good for honda no he's coming in now as is Joshua Hill, and running very wide was Highlander. Was able to gather that up, but Trimington following in a nice draft here. We'll have a look to see. Trimington may be able to challenge for the lead of this race. Oh, Highlander right down the inside of turn one. You don't want to be caught out there. See how far the car stepped out. And he's struggling with pace here. His car is loose. Trimington is on the hunt here to take the lead of the race here. Lap 38. Around the outside, can he make it stick around here into turn four? Highlander sitting fairly vulnerable. I think he's made this stick. Yes, he has. Keeps it off the wall, but Highlander looks like he's coming into pit lane. No, he's not. And Scar, the man that was a lap down, almost made his way back through the field to get back on the lead lap. All without the, the help of a safety car at the moment. So Scar is absolutely motoring around at the moment. He's on a 38.771, almost a second and a half faster than the car of the lead of the race, Trimington. So this is to get his lap back. Jay Barrett's up into third position with VGA Philly now in the fourth position. As we said, the leaders had to go and have their stop during a green flag running. As after that battle, Trimington has been able to do a 38.724. So you can see how much that battling with Highlander cost them. And let's have a look just down. Uh, not who I think, Jay Wade, I think it might have been. Like there's a little of a battle there with Ashley Kutchi. But things started to heat up there from lap 30, 36 onwards. Oh, a little brush of the wall from John. Got to try and limit that as much as he can. 
was on performance impact in damage, set it low. So these drivers know that they will escape him. Serious damage by little brushes on the wall, but if you hit it at a certain angle in a different way, you don't want to flirt with that. Because uh, obviously it will bring out some suspension damage and you will need to come into the pits and any aero damage that you may pick up will cost you time down these straights. As does engine damage. Oh, it slides way up into the wall, John Wade. So things aren't going right with him at the moment and so does Ashley. They're pushing it so hard at the moment. John's on the hunt for position eight. Let's um, go, oh, look at Ashley wide. He's having a big moment here. Ashley's going to take it down the inside of turn two. As Ashley's rear of his car is not stable one bit. Maybe from his pit stop, he hasn't changed his weight jacker. Or maybe the roll bars, because that can be detrimental to the car with a handle in. So these drivers were definitely playing with those set, with the, the roll bars and the weight jacker during their stints as Woody Liz is looking around the outside of Ashley and makes it makes it stick so welcome into the top 10 to Woody started in 12th Thailand has now found himself in pit lane Trying to see if he can put John Wade into any little mistake. It's all really about trying to see how close you can get to the car without upsetting your own aero. And seeing where you can have a look as Woody's looking down the inside here of John Wade and looks like he's going to make that one stick. Nicely done. And John Wade pushes very, very wide but gathers it luckily through turn one. That could have ended right up in the barriers. So nice driving by John minute there I thought he was going straight to the wall but out front there's no one stopping here Trimmington it's absolutely set ANZ CRL a light on his late entry into the series he has been doing a fantastic job and we here he is leading the big one the Indy 500 on lap 45 Still plenty of racing to go. Scar still trying to get his lap back. Still working through the field as well at the moment. Up into 14th. And into the pits they come. So Scar's followed into the pit lane as well. But this will give Jay Barrett the lead of the race. As Commander Sirius comes into the pit lanes as well. So welcome to the lead. Mr. Jay Barrett. And this is the part of the ANZ CRL Triple Crown. We run on Automobilista 2 with the, the running of the Monaco Grand Prix, the Indy 500. And at this stage, while we wait for the hopefully fingers crossed, all the Automobilista fans of Le Mans 24 being able to come to the game, we can only hope we use our own Bathurst 1000 as uh, the final leg of the Triple Crown. And in comes Jay Barrett in for his pits as Joshua Hill now will regain the lead. As Scar just comes on out of the exit of the pit lane. They have to use the, uh, the blend lane of turns one and two. And I think this will actually bring Scar maybe just in front on the lead lap. If he can hold Joshua Hill off. Joshua Hill takes him, which he has. So he's just stuck down there. So he's a lap down. So just remember, all the cars will get a lap back during the any safety car period, which always lasts for two pit limiter laps around the circuit. And the pit limit is set at 150 as that's the speed limit in pit lane. We'll go through Ashley Cucci, I think. Dado's just made a move up as Woody Lizard has hit the pits for a green flag pit stop. And it was great to have a couple of green flag pit stops through the race as well. 
with um, not too many safety cars. Strategy really does play out as uh, Jay Barrett now getting on the back of Trimington, who's in second position. And let's uh, enjoy a lap around where he's uh, traveling closely behind Trimington. Just see how he's had to lift because he's got into that dirty air and the car didn't bite on turning. So it's not just all about flat out turning left. The car, the track evolved through the race and the cars also during their stints all changed and you had to be on top of it. You had to be able to change your roll bars, your weight jacker, all that and do it in the right direction as well. Experimenting sometimes gave you surprise results. You had to be quick on your reactions to save a very loose car or a car that would end up understeering with that little change that you may have done. The track has uh, got quite a little, quite bumpy, as you can see. So there are obviously fine tuning parts of the car that I'm sure will evolve over the times that we start to experiment. This is our first time running an Indy 500 on Automobilista, as we have uh, ANZ CRL, as we all know, come from the console. And obviously getting our heads around different parts of tuning, what they can do, especially through stints. You can obviously do hot laps and get a car, but it's not going to really reflect a very nice well-behaved race car, especially when you get amongst traffic. So getting a car that actually can run long periods of time without too much engine damage we found would be very beneficial here for this race because the less damage you had, the faster the car kept going. So once it crept up, as we said, around that 15 to 20% mark, and most drivers didn't run it too much higher than that before repairing, because you could see the performance from the cars that had already pitted and had damage repaired as VGA filling, Commander Series having a nice little battle. For position 12, 13. VGA Philly subbing in for Rangy Rover in the number 15 Walker Racing. Rangy didn't have the best of luck through the series. Only um, attended, I think it was two races throughout the season. But it was uh, grateful, obviously, to have a driver subbing in for him. Work commitments getting in the way, which is understandable and frustrating at the same time. Oh, FG, big, big sideways moment, very loose in a turn one, and he held onto it. That could have ended in tears. Great driving by FGA Philly, but VGA Philly, I keep saying F, VGA Philly. And uh, just a little insight of VGA, that is Veterans Game in Australia. So uh, John Philly is obviously a uh, return veteran and they use gaming as a platform to also entertain and keep headspace as well for the return troops. So Veterans Gaming Australia. And you can check them out also. They do a lot of YouTube uh, streaming on different types of racing, not just uh, sim racing. They do all types of um, games, as you could imagine. Being uh, uh, veterans, there'd probably be a lot of uh, first-person shooter type games, war games, and things like that as well. Uh, strategy games. So check them out. Uh, Veteran Gaming Australia. But Ashley Cucci in sixth position. Lap 54 of 200. And he is... Just seen who he is tailing there. The number 18 of Joshua Hill. So he's obviously getting uh, not too sure what's happening there. It's not a 
No, that's uh, I had the wrong number. Sorry. So number. Not too sure. Ah, uh, could have been the unicorn. It's a unicorn. That's the uh, problem. We're used to seeing the unicorn in the uh, Duracell car during the road series. So obviously, as I said, the Lola cars are not competitive around the super speedway. So they were able to change their uh, car to the Reynard chassis at both Fontana for round two of the series and this final round six at Indy 500. As uh, Ashley now trying to hold off Dado, who's on the comeback trail after their pit stop. So they're out of sync at the moment, a little bit from Joshua Hill and Trimington, the leaders. In relation, I think, to pit stops. But a yellow will cure all that, as Woody's not too far behind these guys, but I think a lap down. Yes, he is. Woody's actually a lap down. But he's not too far from what's happening here at the moment with Ashley and Dado. So I hope you're enjoying the replay from our Indy 500 that we had at AusNZ Combined Racing League Sunday just gone on the 21st of May 2023. And this is the 1995 livery pack from A. Fry which you can find on Race Department and featuring the Gen 1 uh, Racing uh, America Formula cars. Formula USA Gen 1 cars. And they're such a great car to drive. If you haven't done it on Auto Mobilista 2, if you don't have the DLC, save up. Don't have those coffees. Go away. Don't have those beers at the pub. Have one or two less beers at the pub. Not telling you not to go to the pub, but uh, just go a little bit easy and save a few dollars. Make sure you buy the Racing USA pack. You can get it as a bundle, I think, or the, these cars, I believe, are in the number two pack. There's three uh, versions. Just to get to the Indy 500 track, I believe you might have to get the pack one, I think it is. So it's good to get the bundle. And you get a range of the different gen uh, Indy cars. But they're such a challenge and such a great car. You use your right uh, foot basically to steer these things, as well as your steering inputs. They're a true race car. It's so much fun. As, uh, we'll just pick up here Commander Cirrus, I think, just in front of VGA Philly, who we were talking about earlier. So, Commander Cirrus in the famous Valvoline car. Uh, Robbie Gordon, I think it might have been. Now, I can't quite remember in real life there, but... Or was it Al Unser Jr.? I think it might have been Robbie Gordon, actually. Yeah, so there we go. So, just still a little bit loose. We've seen that car, Commander Cirrus, just struggling through this race. He wants to try and see if he can start dialing that out with those changes of the weight jacker or the roll bars through these stints. Looks a bit of a handful. He's got his good mate, BJ Philly, just coming up behind. In the Xbox days, they were in a team that they used to call themselves P51 Sim Sports. And, uh,. Did great things and uh, friendships still continue, but battling out here on track for supremacy. And here comes VGA Philly having a look down the inside in the turn one. We haven't seen a move for a while, and we've seen one nice and clean as Commander Sirius lifts off. And you can just see he can now try and tuck in and, and get a good run if he can. We've seen some cars challenging. And trying to not let the cars through into turn one. And you can see how far they drift up on the wall. But with that lift that Commander Cirrus did, he was able to bite the car in and still turn in and take his line. So it's all about understanding when to give that position up. As we said, we're only lap 60 of 200. So damage and falling laps behind is not what drivers want to be experiencing, especially at this stage of the race as well. Because... We've only had the one or two safety car period. I think it was only the one. 
We've had this great green flag run in here at the moment. So the safety car period was at lap 10. So we've gone about 50 laps without a safety car. Hey, Darky. And uh, definitely was such a cool race to be a part of. Yes, it was long, but it was just a great mental game as well. The drivers decide and when to pit. Will you pit and get that engine damage done, or will you go for a quicker pit and come out in front for track position? But knowing that you're going to be vulnerable in the later part of your next stint, when the engine starts to creep up to that 20 or over 20% damage, and the other driver will only be around that 10% mark. And you definitely found, found the difference of how much extra pace you did have. Oh, as, as our Cirrus runs wide. Just looking at Dark Lord, just in front of VGA Philly at the moment. Still six laps down off the lead pack. Obviously just roll, rolling around at the moment, trying to find a wait for a safety car period. As that would really, really get him up a few laps there. You can get around about two laps back during a safety car period. Oh, there he goes. He's into the wall though. Big moment. He's lost, he's got some damage there. He's gonna be in the pit lane. He's straight down into the low line, into pit lane. No, he's not, he's continuing on. You can see that engine cover off that car. So he's gonna be a little bit vulnerable here with his handling. You can see it's twitching all over the place. He's holding the low line. So that's unfortunately gonna be another visit into pit lane. Now he hasn't called the yellow because the yellow was available for single driver incidents. You can see how that looks like it's crabbing a little bit. And it was mainly due to if the car spun as a single car spin, not just a drift off into the barriers. So in he comes, cleans up his own engine cover on the way in. That's flying everywhere. Bouncing, bouncing, and sits there on the exit of turn four. Yeah, the Lola Darky was off the pace, so all the Lola drivers through the series were able to run the Mercedes, I mean, not the Mercedes, the Raynard 95 chassis, but must uh, had to stay in the same engine configuration. So if they were a Ford Lola or a Mercedes Lola, they had to do the same in the Raynard chassis. Mm. And that was for Fontana round two and this final round at Indianapolis because at Gateway, being a short oval, it uh, was more like a road course and the Lolas were very competitive in that sort of setup. It's the super speedways where they just do not perform at all. So it was only fair as it was part of the uh, championship to let drivers still be competitive and been a special event as well, having other drivers coming in uh, and being all in the uh, Raynards. And if you're stuck in the Lola chassis, getting swabbed, it would do you no good in the championship. All the enjoyment of the race. So fingers crossed, Riser can uh, Riza can actually fix those uh, little problems up. As we look like we've got a yellow flag. Period. As cars are coming into pit lane. And we should see the cars slowing down here now. And Trimington into second position still. So good job there as they're all filtering in pit lane. And this is where most people will be picking up, getting their damage repaired, everything like that. Woody Lizard stayed out. Getting a lap back. As he's coming on up to the field, the leaders. Then we were asked to slow down and not scream past around the outside, at least respect the safety car. As you can see, slowed down quite dramatically. And then once you're through, you continue on.
as Commander Cirrus comes around the outside as well to get his lap back and fuel all the leaders now coming into pit lane. So it's a little bit confusing there because they had their first lap there under the virtual safety car. And we got Highlander. Coming into pit lane. And Christopher now. These guys, Christopher's now got the lead of the race by the looks of it. Christopher know, now knows it's actually safe. So there was a period there where Christopher was a little bit confused. So he took the lead of the race, so he had to be on the pit limit a lot earlier. So they have to go around once more, let everyone catch up. So he's going to make it difficult for some of those cars that were trying to get their lap back. As Ashley has got his uh, limiter on. So Christopher's going to have to come back to him, I think. And I think he's done that. I think it was just uh, a graphic error there, actually, because there he is. Everything's all normal. I was in the race and I'm even getting confused myself. But I remember that this yellow, this actual yellow period was confusing because we had the leaders already done one lap around um, under the safety car with the 150k speed limit by Jay Barrett and then he pitted the next lap around. So then the next car that would, when they came through, that we should have been racing this lap. But because they went through fast before they put their limit on, we had to have one more lap. So it was only fair for all the other cars to catch on because they should have been able to still be on part of this queue. And you can still see that everyone's still filtering through to join this queue. But this put on majority of the field all in the same lap. I think Scar was in the pit lane. Actually, Scar's retired. That was the problem. Scar retired on lap 68. So he he's retired, all these other cars. So Woody Lisa was the last car on the lead lap in position 13. And he's catching the grid. And yeah, well, we will see what happens here. So this is an example of just making sure you don't take advantage as these leaders are coming through to start this race. And Woody Lisa is coming very, very fast. Could have kept going because it's green. They said green, but he slowed right up and made sure he didn't make any moves and just held position and let that race continue on because he didn't want any incidents. As uh, going wide in the background there was Jay Barrett, I think it may have been, he's ducked back down. Or was it John Slow? I'm not too sure. Oh, big moment here. Jay Barrett into the back of John Wade. And drivers are still trying to get through here. Nowhere to go for the unicorn. And bang, big damage. Big damage. We've got one car upside down. And that's Dark Lord. Big incident. And that's cleaned up quite a lot of cars here. And Jay Barrett, big damage. As you've seen, that he got into Jay Wade. So I think he's got some damage as well. So he's coming in. Trimington looks like he's got away without any. But the Unicorn, he came in, had nowhere to go as well. So a big problem down the back straight. And we've got another safety car. So as we say, safety car breeds safety cars. And this is really going to set the field up now to really get their things together. And we should see maybe... Uh, this is unfortunate the Scar had retired at this stage here. I'm not too sure of the reason being. Again, I think, I don't know if it was an oil leak or something with his engine. There was something there. And um, how long are pit stops? Well, the pit stops were around about 30 seconds um, with fuel and tyres, I think it was. 
I, and engine damage, having the engine damage. So that our, our engine damage repair was about 20 seconds. So fuel and tyres, I think, were around about 15 seconds. And then if they did the engine damage, yeah, he added on about 20 seconds per 10% damage. So engine damage is really important to get changed during the safety car periods. So VGA Philly up in the seventh position, but we got Christopher leading this race. And we had the, not even a full lap of uh, racing after the last safety car period. So hopefully the guys can get it together this time around. Oh, don't they bring back uh, our memories? You've got um, the great looking. I think uh, you, you Darky, would know many of these cars as well. But obviously, Jill DeFerro. I mean, uh, Jack Villeneuve, who actually won this race, we were saying earlier, in the Team Green car. And even the helmets. Have a look at the helmets. Even the helmets have got the liveries. Uh, so it's even Jack's helmet. And. Uh, I don't know if that was Jill DeFerrin. Not too sure who was in the uh, Penzoil. And then Slide Science was in the uh, the Honda. In the uh, number 49 Comtech Racing. Highlander obviously in the uh, famous Marlboro livery. But here we go. We're about to start this race again. And the leaders had the control of the race to yell out green. Single file and off we go again as Ashley's having a look down around the outside early on into turn one. Putting pressure on the leader, Christopher, and the leader of the champion. Yeah, okay, the Penzo deal deal deferring. And the pressure here at the front. Ashley's found some good pace. Well, he's been up and about up there quite a lot in this race but Christopher's been the man that's been leading majority of the race out in fresh air oh and that's we've seen Ashley going running wide quite a few times actually so that's costly Jay Barrett still in pit lane he's struggling big time Woody Lizard now fighting to see if he can uh, get up the position finally on the lead lap. It's taken him a while, but that last safety car period got him on the lead lap. Uh, the first of the, safe, of the two safety cars. So he's running very wide, Woody Lizard. Now he's under pressure from Commander Cirrus. He's had his own battles with uh, car problems as well, being very loose. Woody had to really hold on to that as he's now under attack with Commander Sirius. He's having a look down the inside, Sirius, but thinks better of it. Into turn one, thinks he'll just have another look to see what's happening with Woody. And just behind, John Slow into the barrier. You see, we're not uh, oval specialists around here at OzNZ Combined Racing League. So performance impacting damage set to low. But hitting that wall on a uh, more of an angle than hitting it flat cause a lot of can cause some damage and especially some aero so we have already seen drivers have uh, been in the wall on themselves and lose engine covers and suspension damage so it did give you damage if you hit it wrong but just tagging the wall brushing the wall was okay you don't want to flirt with it with too much As we got a slow car up ahead, I think, going down the back straight. Oh, there's a big moment from Woody there. So straight away, so you can see he hit that hard. And look at the damage he's got. So in the pit lane, so again, green flag pit stop here will be for damage as well. So no yellow cord for that one. Single driver just to run up to the wall have to do a spin an actual physical spin to be caused the yellow on the single car incident so it was worthwhile
Uh, you probably could put a Lola's paint scheme on one of these Reynards, but uh, obviously that's uh, up to the creators to do that. But anyway, back to the racing here with uh, Dado racing third position, trying to challenge Ashley Kucha, but trying to keep oh, VJ Philly behind him, but he's hit the wall, so VJ Philly may have a run down here. Or set him up maybe for the back straight, but look at this racing up in front. Here is v Ashley Coochie running his rear of his car so loose at the moment. Some of these drivers, I think, are getting caught out with their weight jackets, not adjusting them after their pit stops. So they're changing the weight jacket as also as the fuel load was dropping, as would they do with their roll bars. So it was very important to be on top of these. And uh, after your pit stop, make sure you readjust those, uh, those anti-roll bars and any sway bar. A weight jacket, I should say. And this has brought Joshua Hill into the uh, thick of things as well, just tagging on the back of VGA, VGA Philly. Yeah, pretty much you can do any sort of paint scheme you want. You can, you can uh, through Photoshop and um, all that sort of stuff on PC. Yeah, see you, Darky. Have a good day, mate. And uh, you can just see Dado Racer. I think he's just having a little look at Ashley, but pulled out of that one. And this is definitely heating up as, as we speak here. A four-way battle for position two. And it's again Ashley into the wall on turn two, and he couldn't turn it in nicely into turn two, so he's going to be vulnerable here now with Dado. Dado should be able to get him around the outside on entry here into turn three, but what will VGA a Philly do? Well, he got it as well, so Joshua Hill, Ashley Cucci, I mean, is uh, backed right out of that, but VGA Philly. Uh, as it looks like Ashley's into pit lane, so some damage there from Ashley. Obviously hitting that wall fairly hard. So why these cars are battling, they're all up in front. Christopher just keeps extending his lead. As um, Dado's now just trying to get a lap done on one of the lap cars of um, John Wade. But John Wade all the way in the 12th position. He qualified in 14th position, so John finding himself actually a lap down at the moment. Obviously, we'll want to see if he can try and benefit from another safety car period and hopefully get back on up on the lead lap. But this battle here for the second is still well and truly alive between Dado and VGA Philly. Will Philly duck it down the inside here? He's almost on the back of Dado's gearbox. You can see how VJ Philly turned in that little bit earlier, would have pushed him a bit wide, but maybe he also helped him get that little initial turn in, getting out of the dirty air. You really had to set up where you're going to overtake to. It wasn't clear cut. You couldn't just do it right in the turn uh, corner entry as soon as you caught up to him. As Dado's drifted wide, uh, VJ Philly's drifting wide as well. Look at this racing. We have got these cars set up loose and they're going fast. And just in the background there, you've got slide signs trying to hold off Commander Cirrus for fifth position. Commander Cirrus trying his best here, but slide signs is absolutely driving the skin out of this Honda. And he qualified in last position, and he's up in fifth position, so he's found some extra pace overnight. Qualifying was done on the Saturday. Race was Sunday here in Australia. And he's doing his best he can to hold on to this fifth position. He'll be 
loving this battle. Commander Sirius obviously finding it hard. It looks like that car is pushing a little bit too much in the dirty air. Back up here with VGA Philly. Let's go on board. Oh, we'll just hold on for a second here as he looks like he could be making a move here on the track. Dado's loose in the rear of that car. It's going around the outside. This is going to be brave into turn one. Someone's going to have to lift. Who's it going to be? Dado lifts. And just gets it done. VJ Philly up into second position. Sensational job. Don't forget that VJ Philly was seventh in, in qualifying. So he's got the pace to run with these guys. But Dado was the pole man. And fighting hard. Almost getting to middle race distance. As we pick up position five here of Slide Science and uh, Commander Cirrus in a massive battle. And only the two Hondas in the Reynard chassis available in the game, so only the two liveries. So we've got Slide Science in fifth and five places back, Woody Lizard in tenth. Or Woody Lizard got back onto the lead lap, but we did see him run wide here out of turn four and uh, collect that wall, put him straight back into pits and a lap down for repair. So he's going to have to do it the hard way again and try and get that lap back. But back here in fifth position, we have the Comtech Racing car of uh, Dada of uh, Slide Science. Just holding off Commander Cirrus who, yeah, definitely does show that I think he's quick in the clean air Cirrus, but once he gets up to these cars, he's finding it difficult to try and make a pass or make a move. But it's looking like it's got not bad turn in there to, into turn four. It's tracking well. So just some inconsistencies here for Cirrus. Now we'll pick up John Slow as he can now see the yellow Penzoil car of Trimington in front. And Woody Lizard not too far behind him as well as Ashley Kuchi as well. So these drivers, but they're a lap down. So Woody Lizard is just in front of Ashley. Drivers that are a lap down. I think the Unicorn's two laps down, maybe three. And let's just see how, how he's working this uh, car. Commander Cirrus in position six, the number uh, five Walker Racing car. Teammates with uh, VGA Philly, Philly actually talking about them being back in the day with the P51 Sim Sports. They're both in, just notice that the Walker Racing car, so number 15 and number five. So quite fitting that they were both put in team cars. Just different liveries. So getting closer to that half race distance. Little brush of the wall from Cirrus. Not much steering input needed to get around this circuit. You can see now he's got to run. But watch him struggle here maybe into the corner. Well, he's not struggling. Actually, he's gaining time now. So the car may be starting to come to him. Maybe with the mid-fuel tanks. So the, the fuel level's starting to drop in these cars after their last lot of pit stops. So he's looking very racy. Now uncomfortable 
behind the car close. We haven't seen this before on the track cameras. It looks like he's been struggling. But right at this moment, lap 94, 200, he's looking every bit like a car that can challenge for top spot here later in this race. As we said, the track does involve, evolve around the race distance. And you really do notice the differences by running a full 200 laps around here. Yes, it's a long race. And you've got some committed uh, sim racers wanting to do it. I tell you what, it's very worthwhile getting your league organiser to organise one. Because it's so much fun. The car evolves. There's the changing of the roll bars. The notice, oh, the notice of the, uh, the engine damage. How much that slows you down a little bit as you creep it up. It's... Or do you go through a strategy where you just repair the engine damage each pit stop? And as we said before, it actually um, extends your uh, pit stop time by around about 20 seconds for 10% engine damage. So you'll go, well, you go a lap down anyway when you pit on the green, but you'll fall, you know, a lap and a half basically. So having the option to be able to have verbal safety cars helps as well for drivers to do this but look up the front for the battle of the lead we've got Christopher now under challenge from VGA Philly slides I mean Commander Sirius's teammate in the number 15 Walker racing and here we go we've seen how close VGA Philly likes to get to the back of the gearboxes of cars for his challenge and he's been able to make this stick into turn three yes he has Little glance of the wall just to throw up a little bit of concrete painted dust into Christopher's helmet. And now Christopher's trying to think, where can I attack him again? Or will Christopher, in, in so much clean running, will he find himself now just happy to hold here and conserve a little bit? Have a breather. But knowing Christopher has been an all-out racer, he won't. What he will be ruining at the moment that uh, he's thrown away the lead of the race just on the halfway race distance. The VGA filly looks like he will be leading this race at lap 100. He's got a couple more to go. As there you go, Christopher into pit lane. So he was going to have to pit anyway. So VGA filly better on the fuel or maybe out of sync with the pit stops. We'll keep an eye on VGA Philly as he may cross the line this time around to take the half race distance. Well, half race distance really is the start of lap 101. He's on lap 99. see Christopher still just rolling out of pit lane there so there you go so you lose a lap and by the time he gets out of pit lane and back up the pace you can say VGA Philly will be pretty much on this back straight so you can see a lap and a half just on your normal pit stop and maybe there was engine repair done for Christopher Razor during that green flag pit stop Dado's only three seconds, three and a half seconds behind VGA Philly as he's coming around to take the half race distance leading this motor race. So there's one tick for VGA Philly in his quest to take a second ANZ CRL Indy 500. He won one, as we said, back in 2021 and currently the track lap record, which was a 38.3, but we can already, I mean, a 38 point nine so he's already better that in that in these 95 cars on ams2 with a 38.340 that lap around so that's probably the fastest lap of the race i'd say as well at the moment so he's flying at this stage So we'll try and pick up these guys as they're coming around the straight of timing. So Trimington still in front of John Slow.
And Ashley's trying to get latch onto the back of Woody Lizard, who is two and a half, two and a half points. Yeah, two and a half seconds behind. As I think that might be John Slow. Yeah, coming out of pit lane. I think he might have been. And the unicorn doing his thing around here on the back straight in position 12. And he's going to take his half race distance. He's three laps down off the lead. And obviously he'll be hoping for another safety car period. Try and grab a few, pit, uh, few places back as the leader of the race goes into pit lane. So Dado Racer, pole man, has finally taken the lead of the race once again. So we missed out on what actually happened to him at the start of the race. He dropped from first down to fifth or sixth. Um, as our cameraman was a little bit lazy, we mix, missed whatever happened there. I'd say out of turns one and two, out of turn two or three or something like that. The entry into turn three or exit of turn two. As safety car has been called, so there's been a problem. I think, or is we still green and they're going into pit lane? No, I think we're still going. And that's another good thing. It'd be good if uh, maybe the Reza, as most league organisers, may be racing. If they could obviously have a button to press to cause the call yellow would be pretty good. Maybe they have to press it twice just to confirm. In case they press it accidentally, it doesn't actually just trigger a full course yellow. Uh, some little ideas there that would work in pretty well, well I reckon. So that way there, if you don't have the ability to have a race director at the time, even if you do have streamers doing a race director, maybe they could have the option then to be able to call the yellows. And then the uh, start and restart of the race is uh, Dado, I think, comes into pit lane. Yes, he does. Or Trimington, I mean. So this gives Commander Cirrus the uh, lead of the race. Long overdue, some would say. To see the number five Walker racing car in the lead. But I think it would be great, like if you were actually a driver and you're the uh, host of the of the race, it'd be great if you could have a button that you could map either key bar board or on your wheel. And if you press it once, a little thing comes up, a little display somewhere. You can put that in your hut, either top right or, or somewhere. and. If you press it again, it will actually activate it. And then uh, that stays up. And then when you press it again, it will basically give you the option to uh, confirm that uh, to release the yellow and have resume in a racing. It'll uh, be a nice little feature that we haven't seen in any games as we speak. So as Cirrus comes into pit lane, and it's a... Uh, Bit of an awkward camera there where it doesn't pick up. It'd be nice if you had this camera where you could see him come into pit lane. So see if they're uh, struggling to slow it down. As John Slow actually is the lead off this race. No, John Slow's in the pit lane as well. So it is actually Highlander in the Marlboro car. Unless he's going to come into the pit lane as he's coming around turn four now. No, he's on the back straight. So... Back straight and also still in third position as we're still waiting for Commander Cirrus to move out of pit lane. So he's still there. Now he's moving. So this is going to be close, but he's at the start of pit lane. So here comes Highlander now. So right behind him is Christopher Razor challenging. So here we go. This is for the lead of the race. Highlander should have it. But we've got Christopher having a word to say about this around the outside of turn one. Oh, that was close. He almost made that stick. And the overtake around the outside as they went full noise into turn one would have been sensational. And look just behind here, you got Woody Lizard. Oh, having a move on tr on uh, Trimington. In the fourth place. So it's been a long time for Woody to get up on the lead lap. And he's finally there. 
but this battle here, I shouldn't have moved away from this one because it's still on, but here we go. Christopher's down the inside. Oh, big moment. Highlanders hold on to it as the camera was just changing the cars and Highland has been able to hold on to it, but big moment on the turn in. Now VGA Philly's got the run and he should be able to get this clear around the outside, down the back straight into turn three. Highland is defending, trying to still put that challenge in, but no, it's VJ, VGA Philly holding now into second position. Now Woody Lizard's starting to put a move coming hard at Highlander in fourth position. So the Honda is definitely motoring now as we'd seen um, slide signs up in fifth position earlier and the Honda was lapping very solidly. So the Hondas are looking good. And here comes Woody. Going up on the outside of Highlander into turn three. Is he going to make this stick? No, but he's still holding there on the high line, keeping the gas on. Oh, he just got checked up. He just couldn't turn it in there where Highlander was just there. Woody looked like he tried to drop it down low. Just had to correct his steering angle. Almost put him into the wall. So it's Highlander at this stage holding off Woody Lizard for third position. Lap 111 of 200. Now Woody's got another run. He's been solid out of turn two. Will he make this stick? This time he's still around the outside. Can he keep going? Yes, he's, I think he's made it around the outside of turn three. Nice move by Woody. And puts Highlander down to third. So Highlander was leading this race only five laps ago. And now he finds himself in fourth position. And they're still lapping. Fairly competitive. Well, Highlander, that was last lap was a 39.8. So obviously he's been under a challenge. But the top three, there's nothing in it. As we got Christopher into turn three. Through turn four. Nice lines, keeping that pace going in the number 17. Pack West Racing, Ford Cosworth. Ash oh, excuse me, Ashley in pit lane, as is Jay Barrett. Jay Barrett is actually, yes, here he is, he's coming out now. So an unscheduled stop for uh, Barrett. You can see how they just got to be careful that they don't get too much power on these uh, blend lo um, lane. Got to keep it nice and cool. Oh, you can just see how uh, they see they're all set up with the canvas. They're all different as they uh, want to use the the flat the uh, the banking. As we've got the uh, two Penzoil cars running four and five. As Woody Lizards is now in pit lane. So he's had to do a green flag pit stop. And he dropped from third position down back to ninth. Commander Cirrus not too far behind Trimington. And he's got Joshua Hill as well, just lurking in the background. These cars absolutely look fantastic out on circuit. Jay Hill. into the wall as he was trying to defend from the car 25 of John Wade. Oh, and this is a big moment into the back of each other. Pit lane speed limit was 150 kilometers. Now these guys went toe to toe. We had 
obviously John Way trying to get a lap back through the field. And once Joshua Hill was putting up a fight, as um, and it just didn't pay off, and they've come to blows. And I'm not too sure if they've caught a yellow there. There was two cars involved. If they've caught a yellow, and Christopher's still on the full noise pedal. So it looks like they didn't cause, call a uh, full course yellow there, which was obviously an option for those two. It was up to the individuals to call out the yellow. So that could have spiced a few things up too, as uh, a few of the cars were still trying to get laps back as well. These drivers now in pit lane for an extended period of time. That's very costly for both Ashley and John Wade. Dado's fairly safe, just at about two seconds up the road from these two at the moment. But how can you be safe around Indy? I tell you what, anything can happen in a blink of an eye. And we've seen that happen already. Obviously got Highlander at the moment in back in the third and just holding off Dado. The Dado's starting to warm up into this race. Pole sitter in we there's obviously some pace in that number eight Pennzoil car. Uh, we'll see what he can do in the whole racing. Uh, Mercedes Benz. Currently, Christopher with a Ford Cosworth engine out in front, as is a VJ, VGA Philly in second. So, the Ford Cosworths. Uh, different tyres. There's only the one slick tyre here for the speedway, but there are hards and softs at some of the road courses. Um, so, yeah, only the one compound. I'm not too sure of the other cars in the Racing USA pack, Darky, as I haven't even driven them yet. Uh, no, I think they're just the one one tyre right across the board, I think. Oh, as we've got, um, I think, I don't know if that's John Slow or not, but uh, it's one of the, no, it's actually Jay Barrett. So he was off on the grass and back into pit lane. So something happened to Barrett and that is damage terminal when he's out of the race on lap 113. Completed laps for um, Barrett. As Ashley Kuchi is in pit lane too, I think he's retired. But uh, Commander Cirrus now having a, another look at Trimington. Onto the back straight. How many times have we seen these two cars at it back in the day as well? The Valvoline and the Pennzoil car. Sure does bring back some memories as Darkie was saying earlier. How good is this? Bringing back the 1995 cars back in, in the year 2023. How good is this? Automobilista 2, thank you so much. As Highlander and Dado, I think, are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If I can pick it up here. Yes, we can. And it's Dado. Still in the third. I don't know if that was... I can't quite remember if that's been a uh, change of position or Dado just holding off third place. The 
basically Highland is stuck in the middle of a Pennzoil sandwich here with Trimington just behind himself. Dado in front of him, but you've always seen his yellow in his uh, front vision and in his mirrors. Yeah, right, Robbie Gordon, number five. And here we go, Dado's just putting a lap down on um, the unicorn. As uh, Highland is having a look to see if he can get through. As the unicorn runs very wide. Big moment for all the unicorn as the faster cars are coming flying through here. Oh, Commander Cirrus attitude. Left, right and centre as he's trying to make that uh, pass without getting uh, caught out with time as he's still trying to keep that pressure on Trimington in front. Oh, and Trimington's. I think Trimington's gone. Oh, in down into the uh, pit lane. So he's having a pit stop. Yeah, quite a bit of slide and these cars were set up fair, a bit loose for that rotation, Darky. And uh, drivers playing around with their roll bars as well was a real issue sometimes, if, as I've been alluding to. If you haven't changed them throughout a stint, the car did change on you. So adjusting them on the fly really did settle the cars down, but you had to do it the right way. And you, you do it one way, stiff in the front at one stage, and one stint in the next stint as the track's evolved as well. And depending where you're travelling behind cars, you might have to loosen it, soften it. It was just as with safety's been caught, as there's been a uh, issue somewhere along the line. As I try and find out where it might be, as cars are coming into pit lane to get things done. Slide science into second position. Will he come into pit lane? Christopher's actually leading this race under caution. And there's Christopher just in front. So let's have a look. So we've obviously got one of the cars being able to come through uh, John Wade, who had that incident earlier. So he's John Wade is plenty of laps down at the moment. Lap 122 of 127. So that's quick mass. I'm trying to work out nearly five laps down. Five, well, it is five laps down. So he's going to stay out, gas it up, and try and get as many laps back as he can, I reckon, through this safety car period. Because he pitted only probably about four, 10 laps ago, if that, for damage with Ashley Kuchi. And you'd also say that each stint was around about 33 laps. So he's keeping it in to see if he can get his lap back. Woody Lizard is filtered through behind him as Woody needs to get a lap back as well. As he's a lap down. As Slide Science is going around. So there's one more lap around before. So the next lap around will be racing. So Christopher's gone into the pit. So it's given Slide the lead of the race. Just like race day. I'm in the, in the uh, need of a, a toilet break. But I won't. I'll stay with it as uh, a true professional that I am. And as they filter on through, they have got their laps back going through the faster cars. That was a good little... Initially, or oh, it's not initially, we've always run this on the Xbox. Uh, but this, this race here, we actually, instead of just the one lap, they were able to get multiple laps as long as they keep rotating around. In the rules, it was only the one lap, but during the race, it was sort of found that a couple of drivers got a couple of extra laps. So we kept it that way. And uh, as long as you could get those laps back before the cars came around onto turn four. And here we go. So Slide's got the start of the race. So it's re resuming again. 
And Slide finds himself the lead of this race in the Honda on lap 129, the first time the Honda has led the a lap. But he's under attack from Commander Sirius. And look at it, the background there. We've got Highlander up against the wall, three wide, but we've got the challenge for the lead. And this has settled down a little bit, but that was looked like it was going to go three wide for a second there. As Trivington's down the inside getting swamped. Christopher's got him, and then can Highlander get around the outside? Coming onto the start finish straight. It looks like he has got a run. And it looks like Trivington's going to just back it down. As here comes Highlander, almost. That's one thing that Christopher has to be careful of. He's the leader of this series. But the, well, at this stage at the moment, as you'd already know, they scar triple six, his um, competitor for that championship win, uh, has actually retired in this race. So it's looking good for um, Christopher at this stage, but a DNF, he definitely doesn't want that. So that was a pretty hairy moment between himself and Christopher. I mean, Christopher and Highlander, sorry. But John slows on the, on the up here at the moment, trying to put a move on Commander Cirrus for second place. And look who's lurking in that background, VGA Philly once again. And Paul Mandato's seen it all happen in front of him as well as Commander Sirius trying to break a little bit of the toe from John Slow. He's trying to break up the draft. Geez, there's been some action here for the running of this Indy 500, the inaugural Indy 500 on AMS 2. Here at Oz NZ Combined Racing League. As we said, part of the Triple Crown. Leg two, actually, with leg one was the Monaco Grand Prix. That this man, Dado Racer, in the Penzo car one earlier in the year. So he's already got one part of the uh, Triple Crown clicked. But it's all about trying to see if he can get this one too. And then all we've got then for uh, Dado, if he does win this one, will be the Bathurst 1000 later in the year, which we're planning to be a team event with a full 161 laps split up between either four or three sessions. That's yet to be decided. And uh, drivers will be teamed up together or drivers could do it solo if they wish. But we have a short break in between the uh, the sessions. What we've done on the Xbox before, we break up in 40 laps. So the last lap, last session being 41 laps to make the 461. And between that break, break between each session of 40 laps, drivers can change the drivers around. And obviously, being a uh, a race where individuals can have their own setups that could still happen because obviously you load up into the game with your own setup so setups would be locked because you can't do that unless you have default the drivers would have the freedom to have their own little setup or if they need to do a little setup change between the session if it's been feedback from their driver they think they should just tweak a little bit they could it's only usually a quick little half an hour break between sessions though get all done in the one day so be interesting to see how we all go depending on numbers we will have teams of two otherwise there could be drivers doing solo if they wish but having a team factor makes it very enjoyable Uh, Sirius still trying to weave around to break this draft, but John Slow's having none of it, and he's having a good look now, trying to set him up on a run. So it's all about he's just losing ground here out of turn two. So Sirius moving it right down the inside, 
and then coming back again. So he's definitely breaking that toe, but uh, John Slay's not really worried. He's not fussed at all. He's happy just to stay the race in line and frees him up to concentrate on his turning into turn three. So it could be a little bit of an advantage for him at this stage. As uh, Sirius has to come out and readjust himself. VGA Philly just seems to be catching these guys as they're playing a little bit of uh, cat and mouse here at the moment. Commander Sirius and John Slow. And here goes John Slow now. Looks like he's got a good run. Will he get him on the outside here of turn one? No, he doesn't. Tucks back in. But this is starting to heat up. This battle for second. Slide sign still out in front and he's just gapped them. He's in the 38s where these guys in the 39s. So this could be a case where Slide Science engine damage is less than these guys. Because those figures do sort of show that because VGA Philly's even in the 39.1. So I'd say that uh, Slide Science engine condition is a lot better than these guys so that's why he's been able to pump out those better lap times even though he's in clean air VGA Philly's oh as John Slow's rear wing has gone and he's up into the barrier and was well, this brought out the yellow so we'll just pick up on slide science I think it may have, he's into the pits, so goes straight into the pit lane. Slide science, into pit lane, F VGA Philly, no one's going to pick up the lead of this race yet. Dado Racer, what's he going to do? He was right behind, was he of John Slow at the time? I'm not too sure. So John, Dado will take the lead of this race, as everyone else is in pit lane. Woody Lizard's in pit lane, so all the cars are coming in. Dado's decided, elected to stay out. We'll probably see John Wade now. This will be a close call. Will he come in? He'll be getting close where he's going to need to come in. Or oh, he's maybe just thinking, look, laps are the number one key here. I've got to get laps back. So with 33 laps of fuel being burned, per stint roughly. Some cars may get 34. The magic number that these drivers will be looking at for no more stops is there's no more safety cars at lap 170. When the leader starts lap 170, there's no more call out of virtual safety cars. So in saying that, it's a lap 168 roughly is the number that these drivers will be looking at. If they can get to lap 168 pit, That'll get him to the end of the race. Anything before that, you'd be pushing it. Even 100, 167, 20 lap, I mean 30 laps from now, he's going to be pushing it. So you're looking at this stage, roughly two more stops. If you stopped right now, you'll be able to get to that number. So all those drivers that just pitted, they'll only have one more stop. Whereas John Wade, I believe we'll have to have another one somewhere because he won't get. He's going to have to stop probably in the green flag running. But while he's going around here, he's picking up laps. So he was five laps behind, and he's doing his most now to try and get back all those laps that he lost with that accident that he had with Ashley Kutchi, as he was trying to get past Ashley as a uh, lap car, and Ashley just kept it in, kept battling and they came out worse for wear so here we go so Ashley's gonna I mean uh John's coming around again to get that another lap back following the unicorn so he's enjoying these free laps and what's a beautiful thing that is it just keeps us all as sim racers all involved and still hunting 
for a good result. You know, you don't want to see cars numbers of laps down and then you find you're the only one lapping around with no hope to get up any further. But while you're running at this stage, we still don't know how many more yellows there's going to be. We, we, you know, you, you're going to drive in the hope that there's some more yellows so you can get some more laps back, three laps back. So as a sim racer, it keeps you um, invested in the race and uh, keeps you going. But here we go. We should be going green this time around as uh, Dado takes control of this race on lap 142 with Commander Cirrus just in front of his teammate. VGA Philly, both Walker Racing cars, number 5 and 15. And just behind them is Highlander, who's been having a great run in the number 2 Marlboro Team Penske car. As is this man here, Slide Science, is uh, the two Hondas running 5 and 6. So they're looking fairly good with Christopher Razor. We know how good he is. He's been leading the majority of the most laps of this race. Great to see the Honda. Oh, big side from uh, Woody Lizard, but following Slide Science. And you can just see that was a, a definitely aero wash. And obviously inside information, I did have my weight jacker after that pit stop. I hadn't adjusted things, so she was a very oversteery. So too much turning. So that's given Slide Science a bit of a sigh of relief there as he was uh, seeing the sideways car of Woody Lizard behind him. And John Slow, not so slow behind as well. So he's looking in tune for a good result as well. Uh, this is good running by Slide Science, as we said, qualified last. So that just tells you how things you can turn things around. Obviously. The more we race these cars around these ovals, the more we're going to find a little bit more tweaks, camber angles, how to get the better grip. We all said it's already been commented how these cars look a bit loose, which they are. But there's parts of the race where they just dial in and they just stick. <laughs> oh, it's slide. He's had a moment up the end, up the top of turn, um, turn one on the exit. So this is going to hurt slide. It wasn't a big hit, so it's obviously that engine cover's come off just due to the game's physics, but it's probably just a little bit of aero that he's experiencing now. So he's now under pressure from Christopher, the leader of this championship. So he's had a little bit of a scare that time with Highlander. So I think he's just treading carefully here, making sure that he doesn't put himself in that situation again. As he could see a championship just unravel at a uh, wrong decision at this time of the race. Getting down to only 50 laps remaining. And automatically he's got that wing cover back on again. So another one of those things for you, the game with the uh, display. So. I think that's probably right because I don't think he lost his engine cover. I think it was just a little bit of maybe aero. And from memory, I remember Slide saying he had a little bit of damage from that incident. As Christopher's just having a look down the inside, but running wide, but just stayed off the wall on exit of turn four. As he's uh, now trying to see if he can challenge and get in front of Slide Science. So why don't we... Uh, jump on board here enjoy a couple of laps amongst the battle of the hondas so he's in a honda sandwich now a honda on the outlet he's got uh hondas in front and the honda behind 
He's the meat of the sandwich. That meat is a Ford Cosworth. Number 17, Pack West Racing. And you're on board. Normally he drives the number six Lola. Newman has um, car. As we said, the lull was unfortunate. Oh, drifting wide and slides all a little bit loose as well. But all in the meantime, I think they're slowly, that's Highlander up in front. It is, they slowly seems to be catching them. So that damage that I was thinking from slide sides, maybe it's not that bad. There might be another issue late in the race. Lap 150, 50 to go. This 500 mile race, 200 laps around the brickyard here at Indianapolis. We're on board Christopher Razor. As long as he finishes this race, he will be crowned the champion. He had to lift there as he was just getting in that dirty air off slide science. Again, looks like he had to lift. <laughs> Asiris is still holding off um, his teammate in second position, so BGA Philly happy to hold into third place at this stage. Dado cruising through at the moment with a nice little healthy margin of 3.5, extending it at close to four second lead. And this could be very beneficial to Dado if this can run all the way to lap 170. So another 18 laps remaining. And then there's no more uh, risk of any safety cars ruining Dado's race, like his lead that he's got. As he's extending this lead at the moment, that could set him up really well. But as we said, there's still that possibility. There's 18, now 17 laps remaining that a safety car can be caught. And after that time, there'll be no more. So. This is where the part of the race, everyone's been running around for 150 laps, just settling themselves in, making sure, getting an understanding of these cars. They've been cars laps down, they've come back to the lead lap. We've had overtakes, we've had spins, we've had everything. And everyone's still in for a shot, all the way to John Wade, who's in position 11. Actually, no, they're a lap down. The Unicorn and John Wade are a, a lap down, I think, still. Uh, it's the unicorn that we're seeing now getting down another lap from Dado Racer. I'm we'll just going John Wade now. He's on lap 151 to start lap 152, maybe. Yeah, so he'll start 150. So he's two laps down from the leader. So, yeah, hard ass at the moment for John Wade. Oh, talking about a moment there. We just got a moment here with Slide Science. And I think it might have been Highlander. So there's been a big, big crash here. I just got down to have a look at there. And we've just seen them bouncing off one another. So there's been a moment there between these two. Just straight away. Uh, VGA Philly went into the pit lanes. Commander Sirius continued on. Oh, just get onto there. There we go. So he's got a long wait before he finds Christopher and Woody Lizard as they're staying out. As is John Slow. Yeah, rest in peace, all right. That was a big moment from Highlander. So he's in pit lane. So he's got to get damage repair, as does Slide Science. 
slide got away with not too much damage by the looks of things. Highlander still in pit lane. He's going to fall lap down. As here comes Commander Cirrus. See you, Darky. Thanks for watching, mate. Nearly got to see the end of it. You can always come back and uh, fast forward it all the way down. Click the button down to the near the end of the race and get the last part of this race. So hopefully you enjoy when you come back and watch it. Thanks for having your company, mate. All right, so Commander Cirrus in first position. He's got one more lap to do before we go green. Then we have Christopher. Series champion, if he keeps where he is. Woody Lizard in third. As you got John Wade coming around the outside there, getting another lap back. John Slow in fourth. Trimington's looking healthy in fifth position. VGA Philly, now he's pitted, but they're not going to get to the end, so they're going to have to pit again, so... They've given up track position, maybe for the possibility of having engine damage repaired. So their next stop, they might not have to do engine damage repair. But this could be a good move. Dado putting himself in for the shot for the victory. Highlanders trying to get back. Talk about it on a lap. Jeez, he's almost put himself damage into the wall trying to catch up to the queue here. He was lucky not to bin that then. That would definitely put an end to his races. Here we go, Cirrus. Welcome to the lead of the race, my friend. Here we go. Lap 156 of 200. And just behind there, we've got obviously John Slow thinking about a move down the inside. As around the outside, VGA Philly on a move. So John Slate just fine. Oh, Dado! Did he hold on to it? Not too sure. I think he may have. Big moment, though, from um, Dado. It's Commander Cirrus. He's enjoying this fresh air now. Clean air. Been struggling behind the car. So let's see how he goes here. But that was a big sideways moment from Dado Racer. Twelve more laps remaining until no more virtual safety cars. As I say, uh, safety cars breed safety cars, and it was almost the uh, the sign of that with Dado Racer running so wide sideways as well. He was lucky to keep it off the wall. As here comes John Slow down the inside of Trimington, but Trimington's holding strong around the outside onto the start finish straight. Who's it going to be? John Slow has to tuck back in because Trimington had a better drive. Great driving. John Slow trying his best now to see if he can. Get this position up into the top five. Everyone now starts realising that this is really where it starts to sing. If you want to have a good run here and have a chance for a top three or even win, you need to be in this pack. You can't lose touch of it now because we've got 10 laps more before there will be no more virtual safety cars. And you've got to keep your head in the game here. It's very important. That's Highlander and Slide Science. Is this going to be uh, repeating itself again? I think Highlander is actually in front of Slide Science by a bit of a margin. So he's in position seven. Uh, Dado Racer with that big sideways moment that he had. Dropped a ton of positions, I think. Oh, did he hold on to a couple? But he's in position nine. He was actually behind VGA Philly, I think, on the restart. So VGA Philly's up in the fourth position. Dado's still in ninth, so he's, uh, it's been costly for him. 
Now let's have a look at see John Wade. He's on lap 160. And the leaders are on 161. So he's still one lap down. So we've got nine on the lead lap. We have Christopher Re Reiser, Reiser in front of Woody Lizard at this stage. Woody Lizard found himself a lap down for a good quarter of this race, just over, probably a third of the race, actually. And look, he's now fighting for second position in third, posi third place. Half a second behind this man. Oh, there's been a moment. We've had the... Um, the unicorn into the wall coming out everywhere so is this a virtual safety car that can be called even though he's a lap car and it's been called so he's commander serious in the pit lane Christopher I think may be in pit lane as well yes he is they're in Woody Lizard stays out and it's a big welcome to first place leader of the race for the first time, Woody Lizard, in the Honda. And uh, that's a uh, welcome return for the number 31 Tasman Motorsports car. Hasn't seen himself in the lead of the race. So he'll be enjoying his little moment here with not much more to go. And the big factor is there's uh, seven more laps before the No More's virtual safety car. And it's getting closer. Even these cars that are pitting now, they're going to have to pit again. They won't get to the end of the race. But the beneficiary here will be this man, John Wade. He'll be able to come out through. He's a lap down on the leaders, but he'll get his lap back here. So he's going to be in contention. So from a man, this is just shows you only, not even 50 laps ago, he was actually five laps down. So the last few safety cars, he's been able to gain those laps back. And he will be on the lead lap. I think this is about the seventh safety car period being called. It's not like we've had heaps of safety cars throughout this race. Each safety car up here in his two laps. With 150 kilometer speed limit. So he's been able to get through here because there's one more lap to go for these leaders. Well done to John Wade. Sticking with it and getting himself finally on the lead lap here where it counts. Lap 164, once he comes around, he will be, he's 163 now, but he'll take his 164th and racing re re will resume on 165. Five more laps before the end of no more safety car periods and it'll be 35 laps to the end. 33 litres, 33 laps is a normal fuel stint. As I said, they can stretch it out to 34, but 35 is questionable. So all these cars have pitted and they've been doing some slow laps around under the safety car, virtual safety car that is. They're still, <coughs> still not going to get to the end. They're going to have to come in for a splash and dash. Now, will that be no tyres? Because the tyres could actually be double stinted. As I think this man here, Christopher Kerr, um vouch for his last couple of pit stops they weren't changing tires so we're not too sure <coughs> why it was affecting him and no one else but it was working fine for him during the first half of the race but here we go woody lizard to take control here of this start of this race they get the opportunity to start the race from the exit of turn four all the way to the start finish line and woody lizard is gone so here comes John Wade. So he has now got himself up on the lead lap, but it's John Slow who is in second position. Dado now in third place. With slide signs, can we make a Honda on the podium, have a, two Hondas on this podium? Slide Science is saying yes, he's now in the third position. So welcome to the Honda Brigade. We have got a Honda. We have, oh, big moment from Highlander. Has he been able to catch it? He has, but look at Trimington around the outside. They're going toe to toe, these guys. And John Wade wants a piece of this as well. Oh my God, this here we go with lap 166. 
and this all happening. And around the outside on the wall is a unicorn. Hopefully that's not a safety car because this is just heating he he up now. Look at it at the background here with John Philly. And Christopher, Christopher's fighting hard with VGA Philly. Now this is a race now as we watching VGA Philly competing with Christopher Razor. The inaugural victory here on AMS2 is at stake. And now Trimington's having a look down the inside of VGA Philly and makes it stick. So, I mean on Christopher. So Christopher's now dropped down into position eight, but he's trying to fight back hard. Trimming has got the inside line up into turn three. He should be able to get it as long as he doesn't drift wide. He gets that turn in nice, so yes he does. But up front it's Woody Lizard just in front of John Slow who's now starting to mount a challenge. So any driver pitting from this moment on will get to the end of the race with fuel. So this is a strategic play by Woody Lizard, I think, and John Slow. They didn't pit that last la la um, safety car period. As we've got Commander Sirius and FGA Philly, VGA Philly, teammates. And what's going on? I think a virtual safety car's been called. So something's happened. I don't know about Joshua Hill, he's retired. I don't know what's happened. Has it been Highlander again? Yes, it is Highlander. So something's happened with Highlander. He's lost his wing. So obviously he's had some problem with someone, it looks like, with the unicorn. So maybe that was when the unicorn was running wide. So Woody Lizard and John Slow both in pit lane and exiting. Woody Lizard still in. Sunken into the hot concrete of AMS2. Now he's going. So that was an extended stay for Woody Lizard. So that's probably engine damage repaired. So here we go. We have got Commander Cirrus. And there'll be no more virtual safety cars now. So once we go green... I think they've got one more lap to go. We're in that, that window. Now, the cars that pitted earlier, now with this other safety car period, maybe they could get to the end if they're conserving fuel, but it's going to be close. People like Jay Wade. Um, not too sure. Trimington, I don't know if he pitted the last time or was the, the safety car before that, so he could be vulnerable without having too much fuel. We're not too sure. I can't remember when he pitted. VGA Philly, he's pitted nearly every lap, so he's okay. Commander Sirius is in. So obviously, because he hasn't pitted, so he's gonna make sure that he's got the right amount of fuel. So that gives Trimington the lead of this race now. So Trimington, with Christopher just behind him in second, John Wade, who was five laps down. Can you believe this story? And he's now third place in one of the greatest races in the world, the Indy 500. So can he take victory here? Using these 1995 cars in 2023. With Oz and Z Combined Racing League. Hope you've been enjoying this replay race that we did back on Sunday, the 21st of May. This was the final round of our IndyCar series, which was Series 2. And we've got Series 3 coming up in July, which will be the Porsche Carrera Cup for a seven-round championship. So hit our website and um, have a look. And details will be up shortly. It's just in the schedule, but hopefully the details of that series will be up within a week or so and our uh, entries will be open as well so 
Here we go. Strap yourselves in for the last 30 laps. No more virtual safety cars. Trimington has control of this race. And we have 10 cars on the lead lap now. And here we go. Race starts, so it's Trimington. Gonna take this run down into turn one. Dado Racer with Woody Lizard just behind him. And look at Commander Cirrus putting on a big challenge on John Slow. And Highland is sticking to the low line, putting a challenge on Woody Lizard as we speak. And Woody's drifted very, very wide. He'll be lucky to hold on to things here. He's dropped all the way to 10th, so the pressure got to Woody. Uh, the unicorn are just coming out now. But Dado finds himself now into sixth position, right behind Commander, I mean, Slide Science. So the pole man now starting to make his move with 28 to go. Trimington in the same car as Dado out in front by almost a second on Christopher. See him all coming through here now. As Commander Sirius has had a moment, he's uh, dropping back into 10th position now. Woody's up into 9th. Slide Science doing a good job. Oh, into the wall. So this is going to be vulnerable. Dado should maybe have a look down the inside here into turn one. Here he goes. He's made this stick. Slide science. Oh, was there a bump? Was there a touch there? Oh, it was close. Dado Racer has got into hold into fifth position, but that was close. Slide science almost had a touch with Dado. And John Slow putting on the pressure behind there with Highlander. Let's have a look to see Highlander holding off John Slow. Let's uh, quickly go on board here with John Slow. seen that Dado's extended this uh, gap that he's had. Oh, and the VGA Philly has taken the inside line and taken this move on. Christopher, who's now in fourth position. And all the time, Dado is catching. So Dado is starting to look a threat. Christopher started second on the grid as well. And Trimington, I just double check in. I think that he started, where was he? He was third on the grid as well. So Trimington leading the race. Christopher was second, is in fourth. And the pole man, Dado Racer, is in fifth position. So. What's going to happen here? Will we see Dado put on the afterburners? 
He hasn't got a drafty buddy at the moment, so he could be a little bit vulnerable though. That's a oh, big sideways moment there. He's a rear starting to step out. Maybe he's just got those uh, roll bars he needs to adjust a little bit. And up, down, behind here, if we can pick that up. We've got John Slow having a challenge here on Highlander, but Highlander has been able to keep that position. Woody Lizard's having a piece of this as well, coming off sideways out of turn four. And let's not forget about Slide Science sitting there in sixth position as well, not too far away from Dado. And uh, he's seen what he can do in this Honda. He's 39.640 that last lap, not that far off Dado's best time. Well, it's not best time, but the previous lap, I should say. And we'll see what happens there. 39.2 flat for Dado and a 39.640, I think, for Slide. So he's just losing touch, actually, of... Um, Dado, as we speak. And I think uh, VGA Philly is starting to catch the back of John Wade now. It's still this man up front, Trimmington. With 19 to go. And he's got himself a nice little margin of three seconds to John Wade. But there's questions on these two guys' fuel because unless they conserved a lot of fuel in that last safety car period, there's just a little question lingering. Will they be able to get to the end? John Wade, though, you have to say, all the way five laps down has made himself a presence here in second position. So that's an amazing job as John Slow, if we can pick him up. Still holding eighth position. Seeing if he can get a uh, spot to Highlander. Both the drivers, John Slow and Woody Lizard, have a 10 second time penalty, as John Wade does too for speeding in pit lane. So obviously you don't see that graphic come up, but that is actually the case. So. That's going to ruin John Wade's chance here for a podium. He's going to drop down the order with that 10 second at the stage, 13 seconds, he would be in position nine. So that would actually give Trimington a better lead on this race, about a four second lead to John Philly, VGA Philly. And both John Slow and Woody Lizard with 10 seconds. Well, they're the last cars on the lead lap, so they're not going to affect the, anyone there at this stage. Oh, there's been a moment. Dado's into the wall. On lap 183, Dado has found the wall. I'm not too sure where that is. Let's have a look at uh, the map. Oh, oh, that doesn't really tell me. I don't know if that's turn four or turn three. But that's one sick car. So Dado, the pole man. That's the final corner, I think. No, it's a back straight, isn't it? No, it's the final corner, so he'll be able to get straight into pit lane. But that is going to cost him plenty. So his luck at the Indianapolis just does not follow through from Xbox to onto the PC. That slide science in fifth position. 
Christopher is starting to get onto the back of VGA Philly. But look at this battle here between Highlander and John Slow and Woody Lizard. As we said, on track it'll be a battle, but at the end of the race with those time penalties for John Slow and Woody Lizard, Highlander's looking pretty good. Because they've got a 10 second penalty, John Slow and Woody. But it's all about this man at the moment. He is looking very, very good. With only 14 laps remaining, Trimington, in the lead of this race by a margin of almost four seconds, he's been hovering that with him and um, John Wade. But basically a five second lead to VGA Philly. Uh, because take John Wade out of the pitch, he's got a 10 second time penalty for speeding in pit lane. So he's going to drop down the order, as we've said. So he'll be at this stage around about uh, six spot, just behind Slide Science, if it was going to finish now. But we've still got laps to go, 13 to go. What can happen here? We've got the championship leader in position four, who started second. Trimington, as we said, was third on the grid. Scar 666 retired back on lap 68 with engine damage. He was fourth on the grid. Joshua Hill, he retired on lap 114 with a big crash when he was trying to hold off John Wade, trying to get laps back. So, and he qualified in fifth. Ashley Cucci, he's retired back in lap 108 with a crash. So all these, no one that was at starting at the front of the grid other than Christopher and Trimington are doing any good at the moment. Christopher in fourth and uh, Trimington leading this race. And Woody Liz has been able to get the better of John Slow. So he's made that uh, pass on John. So even though they got a 10 second penalty, they want to try and get uh, finish in front of one of these cars. Uh, they're on uh, the same time penalty, so it's race on between these two. Talking about race, v John Wade slowing. He's now in the clutches. VGA Philly has been able to pass him. And now Christopher's on a move to be able to try and get a spot. So is this a question of fuel? We're talking about how these guys were going to run low on the fuel. The other question mark is on Trimington. Ten to go. Oh, bit of a lag spike there. I thought for a minute there we we're going to have John Wade straight into the barrier. Oh, well, that didn't happen in the race. That might have pulled off um, Christopher a little bit as he's looking to see if he can make a move here for third position. And at this stage, John Wade's doing a great job. Maybe conserving fuel a little bit, but it's hard to cons uh, conserve fuel and uh, keep positions here, as you can see now. Christopher up into third position. So John is a sitting duck at this stage. Slide Science is probably next. Let's have a look at this tasty battle still brewing between... Uh, Woody Lizard and John Slow. John actually just dropping a little bit. But Woody is slowly reeling in by the looks of things. Highlander. Highlander with a 39.182 that previous lap. Woody with a 39.120. Not much in it, but that's all it takes on an oval. And lap by lap, you slowly reel them in. That's all what it's about. Slide Science is only just in front of Highlander. Forgot about Slide Science, the leading Honda in fifth position. What a sensational run Slide has had. As I mentioned before, he started last. And up all the way now into fifth position, but that's not only for a short time as Highlander has caught him and now put a position change there. So Highlander up into fifth. Woody Lizard 
having a look at slide sides if you can. The two Hondas running now sixth and seventh. As Woody's down the inside and makes that pass. John slows the next one. So obviously there's some problems there with slide signs. The Honda is not performing. Dropped from fifth to eighth. We're just talking slide signs up from when he started at the back of the grid on this one. Now we kind of catch up with Highlander. He's got 11 second margin on John Wade, who's conserving fuel, trying to get to the end of this race. He's got a bit of a margin now, but will it be enough for him to be able to save those last drops of fuel to get to the end of the race? Highlander chasing hard. He can see a possible fourth place. They would be told that there's obviously some fuel conserving in that number um, oh, 25 a hero car of John Wade. But Trimington again up in the lead with what do we got? Five laps remaining, so things are looking good. But that margin is, is has been reduced. He had about a nearly a four-second margin on this man, VGA Philly. And look at the three now. They're starting to be closer together now. Four to go. Big battle also here for Highlander and Woody Lizard late in the race. Here we go. Highlander in fifth. Woody Lizard having an attack. We know there's a 10 second margin, but Woody Lizard on the outside. And it looks like Woody's going to get him around the outside here on the back straight. Yes, he has. So he's been able to make that move. Fighting back, is he Highlander? No, Highlander's not. But he's also now going to be able to f attack from John Slow. John Slow bumping wheels on the rear axle of Highlander. I think Highlander said, no, I'm not having any of that. Let You can guys have that. He knows that they've got a 10-second time penalty. So he said, you guys, off you go. Now let's get back up front here with when the cameraman wants to get there. We've got... VGA Philly in second, chasing down Trimington, who's got the lead of this race, with two to go. So two more laps to go, and will Trimington be our inaugural Indy 500 winner on Automobilista 2? Things are looking good at the moment, but I tell you what, VGA Philly has reeled him in. That margin that he had of four seconds is now almost evaporated to only 0.6 of a second. So as we said, there was a question if Trimington could go to the end. So maybe he's now on a bit of lift, trying to conserve fuel. And that's not what the situation you want to be in now. With two laps remaining, you got this lap and one more to go. You don't want to have to be rowing about uh, needing to try and save a bit of fuel when you've got a battle like this. VGA Philly. How strong has VGA Philly been? And also Christopher Razor in third position. And here we go. It's slowing down. So lead of the change of the race. VGA Philly has taken the lead of this race on the penultimate la on the on the lead up of in the second last lap. And it is Trimington is in pit lane. That's a cruel blow for the number 80 Hall Racing Team driver. Oh, hard luck. Just trying to ask too much of that fuel in the end. But here we are on the last lap. VGA Philly without anything going wrong. Looks like he's going to be the inaugural winner. He's got a 1.1 second margin. Make it 1.2 at the moment on Christopher. And here we go, last lap, turn four. Well done to VGA Philly in the number 15, Walker Racing. 
the Veterans Game in Australia. And there he is, the inaugural winner and back-to-back, or -back, oh, not back-to-back, -back, but two-time winner of the ANZ CRL Indy 500. Christopher in second. Woody Lizard takes third on the line as I think it was the Unicorn having a massive moment in pit lane. But this is only going to be short-lived for these guys as Highland is going to come through, gobble them up because of the time difference. And Highlander should see himself up into third position once those time penalties hit. Slide science in sixth position. As a nose cone is left there of uh, of um, the unicorn. Trimington ends up home in seventh position. We'll just put that on pause. And let's uh, find out and pick up these uh, results. I uh, forget which one it is. We'll try and uh, uh, get their number. Wrong number, sorry, guys. So here we go. So here's those end results. And we had VGA Philly. Two and a half hours of racing, 200 laps, and takes victory by the slightest of margins, 1.2 seconds from Christopher Razor. Crown the ANZ CRL champion as well for this series. But VGA Philly, the veteran game in Australia, takes out the Indy 500, and here you go, Highlander takes third place with that 10 second uh, penalties issued to Woody Lizard and John Slow. But it was pretty tight in the end there. There was only four seconds of margin from Highlander, so he was lucky to still hold on a third. Woody was given all. And look at the fastest lap, a 38.278 race pace, and it was on the final lap. The fastest lap from both Christopher and VGA Philly was set on the final lap of the race. And it was a 38.278 for Christopher, 38.322 for um, VGA Philly. The unbelievable race there. The Unicorn finishes home in ninth, nine laps down as well. He picked up a 10 second penalty as well, probably for that last crash that he had into pit lane, probably speeding as he had no control. But there he was, some attrition there. We had uh what seven dnfs in the end so that was a uh out of the 16 starters seven dnfs and um but well done to the nine fin nine finishes and uh hope you all enjoyed that we'll have a look at the, also the winner's shots we can't forget the podium and there you go vga philly in the 15 Walker race in Reynard 95i Ford Cosworth engine takes the inaugural Indy 500 in the 1995 cars. The 2024 version will obviously see a different uh, chassis, different car, different year. And uh, with the talk of maybe these new Indy cars coming to AMS2, I'm sure that will be more than likely the car of choice. And um, so that should be very interesting as well. Second, and the championship, uh, the crown champion, Christopher Razor in the number 17 Pack West Racing, Reynard 95i, Ford Cosworth. Normally in the number six, uh, Newman has Lola Ford Chassis, but he takes home second. And Highlander in the number two, Marlboro Team Penske, substituting for red, that was. Um, in the Raynard 95i Mercedes Benz, so we had the two Fords and the Mercedes in on the podium. So well done to those three drivers. Let's not forget, because it was part of the championship, let's have a look at the final positions. And we had Christopher taking that win quite cons uh, the victory of the championship, actually quite uh, commanding in the end with after Scar had two DNFs at the end of the series which really cost him but he was able to just hold on to Woody Lizard actually came home in third leapfrog Dado racer on that last race with Dado's DNF if he finished that race Dado probably would have come home with third position in that championship but he was able to just hold off Joshua Hill uh, so Dado just dropping from third to fourth Mr. Stompy in 30 in sixth position with 34 points he was able to hold that position even though he didn't start the final race with jack jack barrett jay barrett's dnf cost him dearly 
could have jumped up position Trimington. Look at that result. He would have had a first position, his first victory, second last lap, out of fuel. But up into eighth position, John Wade in ninth. Rangy Rover jumped a ton of spots thanks to VGA Philly. Up into tenth position, just in ahead of Ashley Coochie by half a point. You're probably thinking why the half a points. Well, they get um, half points for DNFs. Um, so all DNFs get half position points. And points were scored down from first to twelfth. And there you go. John Slow with that fifth up into tenth position. He had a DNF there at Long Beach. Wasn't low on lap two or three, so he didn't have a good start to that series. But it was glad to, it was great to have him back, I should say. And um, that should be in black, not red there, that fifth. But that was just a graphic error. So, hope you guys have all enjoyed the series. Thanks for watching Oz and Z Combined Racing League on our channel. And as you can see, next series will be the Porsche Carrera Cup, as I said, starting off the first weekend of July. So we have a month, good month and a bit's break. Stay tuned to our website uh, for details of the Porsche Carrera Cup. Until next time, guys, be good to everyone. Stay safe. Cheerio. Thanks for watching.